Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of TechView Snelp. And today we are doing another Android tutorial in the Android tutorial series. And this is the 10th one. In this particular video, we are going to get into how to make a dynamic color for your background. Much more so than we already have in a previous video. And I'm assuming that you watched the previous videos. If you hadn't, then please feel free to check out the card on the top right, which will take you to the previous video. However, if you want to skip this, which is just fine, then please feel free to check out the card about right now, and that will take you to the next video. If that card does not exist, then that means that the video simply is not out yet. But keep in mind, these videos come out once or twice a week, and sharing these videos is much appreciated and will help a lot of people. But anyways, as far as that goes, let's jump on in. So, assuming that you're just getting off of the previous video, what we need to do is simply double click school, and that will open up the school class. And what we need to do is go to the following and copy the following simply just copy this and then what we need to do and copy it by control C or you can just right click and go copy what we need to do is right click on this area on our Java and this area whatever you named yours and go to new and go to Java class and what we need to name this is it's up to you but again naming the classes and layouts and stuff of this nature it helps on when you're developing and adding or taking away so at a quick glance you know what things are so we're going to name it color wheel from here we need to go on the inside the bracket and paste that in by control V or simple play paste. Now, what is this that just came up? This that just came up is simply a thing that needs to be imported into this class that's not already here. If it's not imported, then what you just pasted will not work. However, once it's imported, everything should be fine. So, because we want this code to work, we are going to simply select OK, and that will cause that to work. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this as a private string, and then from here, I want to change everything. So if I click this, I can see that this relates to this and this so th these three things relate to each other so what i want to do is right click that go down to refactoring and rename and it will rename them all at once so i'm going to rename them to m color and notice that they all changed at once and just press enter to finalize that so with that, we want to find the accident small for the colors we want to deal with. Now, I selected three, and what we're going to do is simply replace that, and I, I'm going to simply paste that in. Now, you can go to the GitHub and actually grab this code and paste it from there but I advise you to go on Google and search for hex numbers and try to find the colors that you want. And keep in mind, it's a good idea to actually comment and say what the actual colors are and that way you know what to delete if you want to delete or change something. Now, in order to fix the errors that were popping up, I simply added the 
public string and then because we need to reference it to this uh, or at least we need to know what it's talking about the method we're going to call it get color I added the bracket towards the end and up here and I think I added a string because I accidentally messed that up earlier off camera so with that we shouldn't have any errors anymore and I think we all should be on the same page so we want to really change this so because this is actually referenced a few times to make it easier we can refactor it and the hotkey to do that is shift f6 or again you can simply right click go down to refactor and then rename keep in mind it shows the hotkey right next to where it, it says what it does so with this we're just going to name it something simple like color and press enter as you saw there again it actually changed all instances at once because it was referenced in those locations so the next step is to simply go back to the main activity and what we want to do is go towards the top and then just simply put in private color will m color equals new color will and then close that off then down here what we need to do is simply go to the thing after it says string school equals and so on we can do it before or after that and put in the following string color equals m color will dot get color now we want to have it where it changes the color background based on the string so what we'll just say is color and you might notice it is actually having an error and if we hover over it it will actually tell us the actual error and you can tell by the error the squiggly lines on the top right it will have the explanation and also if you hover over it it will tell you there's one error and if you go down this it will tell you where the error is at. You can actually click on that and it will tell you exactly where the error is at and even giving you a good idea what is on that given line. In fact, real quick, one of the reasons why a lot of developers develop like this, you can theoretically, in fact you can, it's not theory, you can develop where you have a code like this all on one given line and we probably should put some numbers over here probably do that later but um, the reason why we don't do that is simply because let's put all this on one given line and let's take a look you can see that all that is reference And it's hard to find and the longer the line is the more you have to go a given direction so let's undo that so basically it just makes it easier to find what you're looking for in an up and down than having everything where you have to scroll left and right 
So in order to fix this, let's go back to the color wheel. And what we need to do is simply go down to the, put a int in here. So to do that, what we need to do is under the public and string area, we need to just double click on string since this is one that we're going to change and make it a int. Then we need to go down here and just simply type out int. color as ints equals color dot par color And you may notice that we messed up here, so a way to fix it is simply capitalize color. And we need to do a control enter. And then now what we need to do is basically try to figure out why is this given an error. So what parse color does, uh, it basically takes a hexadecimal, which is what we're providing here, and it turns it into an integer which android understands so from here the thing thinks that this is zero and it needs to be one at least and really what's happening is even if we leave it like this what's going to end happening is it's going to be overwritten down here so it's fine and it will still give a error but we won't be able to actually do much with it from how Android works on stopping bad code from going out. So a way to fix it, since we don't want to really do anything with it, is simply do that. And that's a quick way of fixing it. Now you may notice that this is off. So what we want to do is copy that and paste it down there. Simple as that. So let's uh, finish this off. And what we need to do is go back to the main activity, double click the string and tell it it's a int. And now let's run this code and what's going to end up happening is basically i already comment out the invisible so we're not dealing with that and what's going to end up happening is every time we click that it's going to bring up a new color now notice the colors don't really match what is being selected so what you can do in case of it seemed a little bit confusing if you wanted to you can actually add more colors i have a few others on the side so let's go with these and then let's run this again and make sure the invisible command is commented out otherwise this entire thing won't work like you click it once it'll be invisible so as you see here it's able to use all the colors so you don't have an actual problem with adding more colors if you wanted to or having less so with that being said let's do one last thing so as far as the text you might notice that the text 
on here we can actually change that per color type so what we want to do is try to find a button text so the m button dot set text color and then do color and let's run it again and give it a second or two make sure it loads and then as you see here whatever it changes the background to it changes this the text color to uh, the button because what happens is is it'll grab whatever value comes out of here the random number generator that picks ramly from here and since it's the same thing that comes out the both these are grabbing basically whatever the value is from here so it's a pretty simple thing and whatever one ram generator puts out doesn't really have anything to do with the other so that's one big thing to keep in mind now let's say if we want to remove that we can simply do that by doing something as simple as that and we don't have that anymore something very very simple but anyways that's uh, all i'm going to cover in this particular video in the next one we're going to get into app icons and stuff of this nature so please feel free to check that one out when it comes out but as far as that goes let me know if you got any questions down below in the comments if you want to add any more information or anything else if you want to help out this channel then the best way to do it is simply by sharing the videos going to patreon and donating there to help fund this stuff and also please feel free to subscribe and like but if you like this video and whatever hope to see you in the next one and hope you have a great day